this morning. Today we hear and we go back to our text from John 13. And we hear about after washing the disciples' feet, predicting his betrayal, and then revealing his betrayer, Jesus speaks of the glorification on the cross. This deep, complicated love of Jesus, even to death on the cross, will be the distinguishing mark of the Christian community. And so our reading. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am only with you a little longer, and you, you will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Jesus calls us into love. And so I was wondering, I wondered with uh, the early service with the young people, what, what is the one word, if you could think about it, the one word that you hear the most in your day's time? No. <laughs> no. Maybe you hear it or say it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. Or stop it. Or as one young person said earlier, go to bed. <laughs> Don't do that. I would like to think that in our families and in our circles, particularly those of us who follow Jesus, who are the community of Christ that we would hear in our lives the word love. That we not only hear it with our ears, but that we hear it with our hearts. That we see it in action around us. And my guess is that for most of us, that that is our experience. Now in the wider world, we might question that. We might look around and think that other people might not hear it as much, or feel it, or experience it. But here's our challenge this morning. Not just this morning, but each morning, uh, particularly for those of us who are baptized into the name of our Lord Jesus. Our text this morning, Jesus gives us a new command. Now Jesus, you have to picture, is sitting down at dinner. This. This scenario that is set is he's seated at what uh, we would call Monday Thursday, the Thursday of Holy Week, right? He's sitting there, breaking bread, lifting up the cup with his disciples. And his offer of a precise one-point sermon is to love each other. Choose love. Live God's love. His words come, they, they follow the departure of Judas, who left to, do, to betray Jesus. And here the disciples are commanded to choose love in this aftermath of betrayal and in the midst of uncertainty. And that's kind of our experience in the world, isn't it? We, we go into this place that feels like wolves uh, are all around and that there is danger uh, all about us. And often there is. And yet we are still commanded to love. What a time for those disciples. What a time for us to be reminded to choose love when evil seems to be having its way. When those we thought were, were close were the ones who would abandon us. When the actions and words of others clearly come from hate or suspicion and prejudice. 
Jesus still calls us to choose love. Now notice what Jesus doesn't say. And here I've helped a little from a theologian, a writer, Debbie Thomas. She says, when death comes knocking and the Son of God has just mere powers left to communicate the heart of his message to his disciples, kind of like his epitaph or his last words, he says to love one another. He doesn't say, believe the right things. He doesn't say, maintain personal and doctrinal purity. He doesn't say, worship like this or attend a church like that. He doesn't even say, read your Bible or pray every day or preach the gospel in front of every living creature. He says, love one another. That's it. The last hope and dream of Jesus was that all Christianity was distilled down to the essence of love. Jesus also didn't say, this is my suggestion. This is his commandment, not a choice. It's not a matter of personal preference or what we, what we like. It's a matter of obedience to the one we call Lord. And I think as we look around our world, it becomes clear that it's the lack of obedience to God, our limited vision as people, our weak practice, that makes love undetectable in the world around us. Now, just to be clear, when I'm talking about love, I'm not talking about some Hollywood or romantic poetry version, the love that is so much at play in this American culture. But where, where, where love is spontaneous and free-flowing or blind. I think Jesus' love is different. It changes the scope of our world. And it changes us. Loving as Jesus loved, without guarantees or reciprocity, but with reflective compassion and mercy and tender care, that's tough. And Jesus' way of loving is opening our hearts. It's being vulnerable. Jesus wants authentic feeling, deep engagement, and generous action. And so I invite you to think with me on what it would look like for God's people to live like that. What would happen to us, the church, the body of Christ, or to the world? If we took the commandment of Jesus seriously, if we obeyed orders and cultivated what seems impossible, this love, what would people say about God's kingdom here and now? How might we love one another on Saturday mornings or Tuesday afternoons or Thursday evenings in the workplace or our neighborhoods or schools? How would we begin to love one another even better than we've loved before? Even if we're not especially friends with each other, even then, or maybe especially then. These are what Jesus commands. This is his dying wish. We have a God who loves us first and foremost. He wants all of his children to feel loved not be shamed, not punished or chastised, not judged, but loved. And so we follow Jesus' commandment, and it's an exhilarating one, and yet it could also be terrifying, because he says, what we do in love, it is then what we do that others will know. Meaning that it's kind of like a litmus test for Christians how we live our lives. Our love for each other lets the world know about Jesus. It lets others see God at work in the world. It makes Jesus relatable and possible and plausible. Choosing love is not only a different way to live in the world, but also a different way that we see the world. Which means that when you and I love, we can more easily see the love that surrounds us. When we love, we can
can more readily recognize acts of love. When we love, we can more clearly sense expressions of love. So often, love can be overlooked or taken for granted or dismissed as just some kind of act of kindness or niceness when we're not used to living in love. So what Jesus is saying is that we need to be reflective. We need to look inside and act outside. We need to feel and know his love that he has put in our hearts so that the world sees and knows what it needs to know about God. For if the world does not see and know what it needs to know about God, it believes the lies that break God's heart. Like Jesus' resurrection is a sham. And that there's no transforming power. Or that God is angry and vindictive and mean. And the church is only a flawed and hypocritical institution and not Christ's living, breathing body. So our challenge today and every day is to love or to not love. Such stakes involved are how we choose to respond to Jesus' dying wish and commandment. But our saving grace is that Jesus does not leave us alone. We're not left to wander in the wilderness by ourselves. He goes with us and before us with a clear map showing us the way. As I have loved you, follow my example. Do what I do, live as I live, love as I love. Live God's love. And so we go this week, knowing we don't have to do it perfectly, but do it meaningfully. That even those, as we look at the people who uh, have loved us, we acknowledge that their love may not have been perfect, but it was powerful in our lives, and we can be the same in others. God sent Jesus to show us that we are loved, and that his love changes us, and it empowers us to love others, even when we struggle to love. Jesus' commandment to us is not that we should break our backs or open our veins trying to summon love from our own limited resources, but that we are invited to follow him, our guide, the one who has gone before. Rest in him, lean into God, and trust in his holy place where love originates. The most abundant and exhaustible love in existence. God's source is without limit or without end. Love one another as I have loved you. Live God's love for our own sakes and for the world.